Welcome to the Arctic, where the future of shipping is being rewritten. As the ice melts, new sea routes are emerging, promising to slash travel times and costs for global trade. But this isn't just about saving money. It's about geopolitics, environmental risks, and the race for resources. Let's start with the basics. The Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet, and that means the ice is melting. According to the National Snow and Ice Data Center, Arctic sea ice has been declining at a rate of about 13% per decade since 1979. This rapid melt is opening up new shipping routes that were previously impassable. There are three main routes to consider. The Northern Sea Route (NSR) along Russia's northern coast, the Northwest Passage through Canada's Arctic Archipelago, and the Transpolar Sea Route, which goes directly over the North Pole. Of these, the Northern Sea Route is the most developed. It can cut the journey from Europe to Asia by up to two weeks compared to the traditional route through the Suez Canal. For example, a ship traveling from Yokohama, Japan to Rotterdam, Netherlands would cover about 7,000 nautical miles via the NSR, compared to 11,000 miles via Suez. That's a significant time and fuel saving. But it's not just about distance. The Arctic routes also avoid piracy hotspots like the Gulf of Aden and the Strait of Malacca, making them potentially safer. However, these routes are not without their challenges. The ice may be melting, but it's still present, especially in winter. Ships need to be specially designed to handle the ice, and even then, they often require icebreaker escorts. In September 2018, the Venta Maersk made history. This wasn't just any cargo ship. It was the first container vessel to complete the Northern Sea Route, carrying 3,600 containers from Vladivostok, Russia, to St. Petersburg. The journey took 37 days, compared to the 48 days it would have taken through the Suez Canal. But the real star of Arctic shipping is Russia's Christophe de Margerie. This isn't your average cargo ship. It's a technological marvel. At 300 meters long and capable of breaking through 2.1 meters of ice, it can operate year-round in the Arctic. In 2017, it set a speed record, completing the northern sea route in just 6 days and 12 hours. Modern Arctic shipping relies on technology that would have seemed impossible a generation ago. Ships now use advanced weather routing systems that can predict ice conditions weeks in advance. Satellite imagery uploads ice charts in real time, allowing captains to navigate through leads, temporary openings in the ice that might only last hours. The Finnish company Aker Arctic has developed ships with asymmetric hull designs specifically for ice navigation. Instead of pushing through the ice head-on, these ships can turn around and use their sterns to break ice more efficiently. It sounds backwards, but it works. Nuclear-powered cargo ships are also being considered. Russia's Rosatom has proposed civilian nuclear vessels that could operate year-round in the Arctic without refueling. While controversial, the technology exists. Russia has operated nuclear-powered icebreakers for over 60 years without a major incident. The opening of the Arctic is not just a matter of logistics, it's a geopolitical game-changer. The region is rich in resources, including oil, gas, and minerals, and control over the shipping routes could give countries a strategic advantage. Russia is currently leading the pack. Much of the northern sea route lies within its territorial waters, and it's investing heavily in infrastructure to support shipping. This includes building new icebreakers, ports, and even floating nuclear power plants to provide energy to remote areas. In fact, Russia has the world's largest fleet of icebreakers, with over 40 vessels, including several nuclear-powered ones. They're also militarizing the region, reopening Soviet-era bases, and conducting military exercises. But Russia isn't the only player. China, despite not being an Arctic nation, is keenly interested. They've declared themselves a near-Arctic state and are investing in projects along the NSR as part of their Polar Silk Road initiative. They're also building their own icebreakers and conducting research expeditions. The US and Canada are also staking their claims. The US has increased its military presence in the Arctic, with new bases and more frequent patrols. Canada, meanwhile, is asserting its sovereignty over the Northwest Passage, which it considers internal waters, a claim disputed by the US. 
This competition is leading to tensions. There have been incidents of military posturing, and there is a risk of conflict over resource claims or shipping rights. The Arctic is becoming a new arena for great power competition, and the stakes are only going to get higher. While the economic and strategic benefits are clear, the environmental risks are significant. The Arctic is a fragile ecosystem, home to unique wildlife and indigenous communities. Increased shipping could have devastating impacts. One major concern is oil spills. The Arctic's icy waters make cleanup extremely difficult, and a spill could have long-lasting effects on the environment. There is also the risk of invasive species being introduced through ballast water, which could disrupt local ecosystems. Despite the challenges, the economic potential of Arctic shipping is immense. Shorter routes mean lower fuel costs and faster delivery times, which could translate to billions in savings for the shipping industry. For example, the Russian gas company Novatek has been shipping liquefied natural gas from the Yamal Peninsula to Asia via the Northern Sea Route since 2018. They've reported significant cost savings and are planning to expand their operations. In 2023 alone, traffic along the NSR reached a record 36 million tons, with projections to double by 2030. Other industries are also taking notice. Mining companies are exploring the Arctic for minerals like rare earth elements, and tourism is on the rise, with cruise ships venturing into previously inaccessible areas. However, there are significant barriers to entry. Ships need to be ice class, which can cost up to 50% more than regular vessels. There's also a lack of infrastructure, such as ports and search and rescue facilities, which increases the risks. Weather is another challenge. The Arctic is notoriously unpredictable, with sudden storms and shifting ice conditions. Even with advanced forecasting, navigation can be treacherous. The most striking aspect of Arctic shipping's future is how much is already reality. This isn't a distant possibility. It's happening now and accelerating rapidly. Ships are transiting Arctic routes in record numbers. Companies are investing billions in specialized vessels and infrastructure. Countries are adapting their maritime strategies to Arctic realities. The Arctic represents the most significant transformation in global shipping since the advent of containerization. We're witnessing the emergence of new trade routes that could handle millions of tons of cargo annually, supported by cutting-edge technology and massive infrastructure investments. The future of shipping truly does lie in the Arctic. The only question is how quickly that future will arrive and who will be ready to seize the opportunities it presents. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.